Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this adorable animal baby blanket. So yeah, let's just get started with the video. The pattern for the base for the majority of these animal squares is a circle to square granny square which I'm gonna show you in this video. You're going to start off by creating a magic ring. You're going to wrap the yarn around your fingers in the shape of an X, grab your hook, go under the right side and then over the left side, drag your yarn under the right side and then twist your hook. So that's your magic ring. And then you're going to chain two. So you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through your loop twice. The chain two does not count as a double crochet. After that, you're going to do double crochets into the magic ring. To do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the magic ring, yarn over and pull through. With the three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through two, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through the remaining two. So that's your double crochet. You're going to repeat that until you have a total of 12 double crochets inside the magic ring. Once you're done, you're going to pull on the tail of your magic ring to tighten it. To close the round, you're going to skip the chain 2 and then you're gonna slip stitch into that first double crochet. To do that, you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull the yarn all the way through. And with that, you're done with round 1. To move on to round 2, you're going to chain 2. Again, these chain 2 at the beginning of the round do not count as a stitch. For this round, you're going to be doing a double crochet increase, meaning you're going to be doing 2 double crochets in one stitch. So that's your first double crochet. Then into that same stitch, you're going to do another double crochet. So that's your first double crochet increase. You're gonna repeat this pattern all around of doing double crochet increases and by the end you should have a total of 24 stitches. Once you're done, you're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet to close the round. For round 3, you're going to chain 2 and then you're gonna do a double crochet into that first stitch. Then into the following stitch, you're gonna do a double crochet increase. So 2 double crochets in 1 stitch. You're gonna repeat this pattern all around of doing a double crochet followed by a double crochet increase and by the end you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round 4, you're going to chain 2, you're going to do a double crochet into that first stitch, followed by a double crochet into the second stitch, and then into the third stitch, you're gonna do the double crochet increase. You're 
You're gonna repeat this pattern all around of doing two double crochets followed by a double crochet increase and by the end of round four you should have a total of 48 stitches. You're going to change the color of your yarn at the end of round four. You can either use the basic color change method in which you change the color of your yarn at the last double crochet in round four before moving on to round five, or you can use any other method. Here I'm gonna be using the invisible stitch method. Start by cutting your yarn and leave a bit of a long tail and then pull the yarn all the way through. And then using the tail of your yarn and a needle you're going to insert the tail of your yarn not in the first stitch of round four but in the second stitch of round four from the back to the front pull your needle through and then insert it into the center towards the back of the last stitch of round four once you pull on the tail of your yarn you're gonna notice that you have created a stitch on top of the first stitch of round four Weave the end of your tail to secure it and then cut any excess yarn left. To attach your second color, start by creating a slip knot. Insert your hook into any stitch and pull your slip knot through. Chain 1 to start with round 5. You're gonna start by doing a single crochet into that first stitch. You're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. With two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through both of them. You're going to do another single crochet into the following stitch. However, since it's the invisible stitch from the previous round, you're going to actually do a single crochet into both the invisible stitch and the original stitch from round four. You're gonna do one more single crochet so that you have a total of three single crochets. In the next two stitches, you're going to be doing half double crochets. You're going to yarn over, Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then you're gonna do two double crochets. Next, you're going to start making your first corner. You're going to make two triple crochets, chain two, two triple crochets all in one stitch. To triple crochet you're gonna yarn over twice, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. With four loops on your hook you're gonna yarn over and pull through two, then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the last two. So that's your first triple crochet. You're gonna repeat that into the same stitch. Now you're going to chain two and then you're gonna do two more triple crochets into that same stitch. So this is what the corner is going to look like. Next, you're going to do two double crochets followed by two half double crochets. So this is what the pattern is going to look like. You're going to repeat this all around so that you have a total of four corners and by the end you should have a total of 68 stitches. So I'm going to be repeating all of the steps that I just did to create the second corner starting from the three single crochets followed by two half double crochets, 
then two double crochets then we're gonna make the second corner so two triple crochets chain two two triple crochets all in one stitch Then you're gonna do two more double crochets followed by two half double crochets. Repeat these steps two more times to finish round five. Slip stitch into the first single crochet to close the round. For round six, you're going to chain two. Then you're going to do double crochets all around in all of the stitches and then you're gonna do two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in the chain two spaces from round five. So we just reached our first chain two space. We're going to be doing two double crochets followed by chain two followed by two double crochets all in that chain two space. By the end of round six, you should have a total of 84 stitches. Slip stitch into the first double crochet to close the round. For round seven, you're gonna repeat the same thing that you did in round six, However, at the end of the round, you should have a total of 100 stitches. At the end of round 7, you're going to be changing the color of your yarn. I'm going to be showing here the basic color change method at the last double crochet. So we're going to start off with a normal double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops. Once you have two loops remaining on your hook, you're gonna drop your first color, grab your second color, and then try to secure it in place before you yarn over and pull it all the way through. And with that, the color change is done. Now you're just going to slip stitch in the first double crochet to close the round. This color change method is easier than the invisible stitch method because you don't have to cut your yarn. However, the invisible stitch method just results in a cleaner finish because that slip stitch in a different color is not gonna be there. For round eight, you're gonna repeat the pattern that you did for round six and seven, where you're gonna chain two, then you're gonna double crochet all around, and then in the corners, you're going to be doing two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. By the end of round eight, you should have 116 stitches. And with that, the base pattern for the animal square is done. For most of these squares, the circle is going to be the face of the animal, then there's the background, and then there's the white border around all of these squares. I ended up making 30 circles, aka faces for the animals. Once I finished all of the circles, I moved on to the background just so that it's faster. Then I moved on to making all of the elements for each square, so the face or the animal components, and then I sewed everything onto the squares. Shockingly, this took way longer than what I was expecting, especially that you have to weave in all of those ends and make sure everything is secure. So here are the 30 unique animal squares. If you wish the detailed pattern for each square, they're available in my shop. I will link it in the description below. Once you're happy with the layout of your granny squares, make sure you flip the whole layout because we're gonna be working on the back of the squares when stitching them. To connect all the granny squares, you're going to be stitching on the back. You're going to use a needle and a long piece of white yarn to stitch the squares. You're going to insert your needle into the back loop of the second corner chain. However, since we're working on the back, the back loop is actually the loop closest to you. 
insert your needle into the back loop of the chain in the first square and then into the back loop of the chain of the second square and then pull your yarn through make sure you don't pull the yarn all the way through leave a bit of a tail to secure your yarn and then this tail you will weave it in later on insert your needle again into the same two loops so that you create a knot to secure your end Now that your knot is done and your yarn is secure, you're gonna start stitching along the squares to connect them. You're going to insert your needle into the back loop of the stitch in the first square and then in the back loop of the stitch in the second square and then you're gonna repeat that all across. You can definitely use a shorter piece of white yarn to connect the squares, it would be easier. However, I didn't want to have to run out of yarn continuously as I go. And I didn't want to do like the magic knot or like have to weave in a lot of ends. So I just used one long piece of yarn for the whole row. Once you reach a connection of four squares, you're gonna stitch as the following. When you're stitching horizontally, so across the row, you're gonna stitch only in the stitches dedicated for that row. For example, when you reach the end of the row of the first bottom square, you're gonna be stitching in the first chain. So the first chain is going to be the end of the square. And then when you go into the square facing it, Again, you're gonna stitch in the first chain. However, when you go into the second bottom square, you're gonna go into the second chain. And then when you go into the square above that, you're also gonna go in the second chain. Keep in mind, you're working in the back loops only of all of these chains, and then you're just gonna pull your needle and tighten the yarn. And then you're gonna continue stitching across in the back loops of the top and bottom square. You're gonna end the row at one corner chain, so you would still have one chain left when you finish stitching horizontally. You're going to tie a knot at the end to secure your yarn and then leave a long tail to weave it in later on. Moving on to stitching vertically. You're gonna start similar as before and stitch in the back loops only. However, when you're gonna reach an intersection of four squares, you're gonna be stitching in the back loops of all of the chains. So you're gonna stitch in the back loop of each chain and then connect it to the chain facing it. Make sure you keep your yarn tight as you stitch along and also keep the stitches clean because they are going to show from the front. Now that all the squares are connected, we're gonna move on to the border. We're gonna start off by adding a white border to make things even. 
using your white yarn tie a slip knot Insert your hook into the chain space and pull the slip knot through. You're going to chain 3 which will count as a double crochet. This chain 3 aka double crochet is going to be part of the corner. However, we're gonna leave this till the end and then we're just gonna start working on the top side of the blanket. You're going to double crochet in all of the stitches until you reach an intersection between two squares. Once you reach an intersection between two squares, you're going to be doing a double crochet decrease into the two chain spaces. To do a double crochet decrease, you're gonna start off by doing a normal double crochet into the first chain space. Halfway through the double crochet, when you have two more loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over again and go into the second chain space, yarn over and pull through. With four loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the remaining loops. So this is what the decrease looks like. By doing this decrease, the finished blanket is going to be smooth and it will not have ruffles. You're going to continue doing double crochets across all of the stitches and then once you reach an intersection with the chain two spaces, you're going to be doing the decrease there. Once you reach one of the four chain two space corners of the blanket, you're going to be doing five double crochets into that chain two space. And now on to the actual border of the blanket. I'm just here making a slip knot to attach the new yarn. You're going to insert your hook into the center of the corner. So since we have five stitches, we're going to insert our hook into the third double crochet. Pull the slip knot through and chain one to start the round. For the border, we're going to be doing half double crochets all around starting from that first stitch. Since it's a corner stitch, you're going to be doing three half double crochets in one stitch. So that's your first corner. Then you're going to continue to half double crochet all around and then in each corner you're going to be doing three half double crochets in one stitch. So here we're at the second corner of the blanket where we have five double crochets. Our center stitch is the third stitch. So you're going to start by doing two half double crochets across. And then into that third stitch, you're gonna do three half double crochets in one stitch to make up your second corner. And then you're gonna continue to do normal half double crochets. Once you do half double crochets all around, the border is done. I ended up making two more rows similar to this one. The corner stitch for the following row would be the center of the three half double crochets in one stitch. And with that, the Animal Squares baby blanket is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!